It is. Good morning. It's August 27th. Uh, we'll call the Ray County Board of Commissioners to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That looks like the sun's going to come out after some much needed rain. Well, I don't know. We're probably, did we break the record yet, Charlie, for rain? Um, I don't know. I did not hear that. But, well, it's the record since 1892 already. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of a record. That's but, going uh, back. But, yeah, then I'm sure we're getting closer all the time if we haven't. This is like a, a meeting that might not take us two and a half hours or two yeah. hours. That's we'll good. see. <laughs> we'll go at it. Uh, we'll begin right off with the dispensing of the minutes from uh, August 20th. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion we dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as presented. I second that. And all right, we have a motion by Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Houston for the approval of August 20th meeting minutes. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. All right. Today's agenda. Does anyone have any additions or modifications to today's agenda? I just had one item, uh, Mr. Chair. I would like to add uh, Thursday we have a committee of the whole to talk about some building things. I'd also like to add the third floor government center discussion uh, to the committee of the whole that's on Thursday. All right. So. Uh, we'll put that as a consent item to add uh, an agenda item to the Thursday's Committee of the Whole, the discussion of the Third Floor Government Center. All right, that'll be item number C under consent. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chair, with that, I would make a motion to approve the agenda. All right. Um, we have a motion by Commissioner Hewson, second by Commissioner Dahlleiden for the approval of today's agenda. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. What was the same sign? And Mr. Chair, what was the amendment we put on for the consent? Uh, was the just adding a discussion for the Third Floor Government Center okay. uh, on the uh, Thursday's Committee of the Whole. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. With the modification. As, as amended. As amended. All right. We have a motion by Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Potter, for the approval of today's consent agenda as modified with the Committee of the Whole addition item of Third Floor Government Center. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. We will now move down to timed items. <coughs> Mr. Hevela is not first today. Mr. Kelly uh, took the liberty of... <laughs> so with that, well, I'll give um, Administrator Kelly the honor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am pleased to announce that we have our new IT director on staff as of Monday. Uh, Mr. Matthew Fomby comes to us after a long uh, distinguished career in the U.S. Navy, uh, many years in various backgrounds, and very interesting story, um, seen a lot of the world. So with that, I'll turn it over to him for introductions. Um, thank you. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to have a real brief introduction. Um, I don't know, I assume that you've all seen my resume, but my name is Matthew Fomby. I am a native of southern Georgia, so occasionally you hear a y'all slip out. Um, I will try not to, to keep it to a minimum. Um, I'm retiring from the Navy in four days, I think. I have yet to see my official retirement paperwork, and I just got an email today saying, hold your horses, it's on its way. But I'm not the one up against the deadline, so we'll see what they do. I'm quite happy to be here. I'm finishing up 20 plus years, uh, 24 actually, 24 and three months. And um, I'm coming to you from the great country of the Netherlands, wonderful area, loves being there, but I'm happy to be home. So I'm very happy to be here and I will hold for any particular questions you might have or any comments or concerns or issues. No, just welcome aboard and, and hopefully you uh, get everything down pat. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's, a big, it's a big department, it's an important department for, for us at the county here. We need, to, we need leadership at the helm and so Appreciate you checking on board. Yes, sir. And um, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around everything. Please, please, please uh, let me know if you have any comments or concerns or just want to chat at any time. Um, I have told everybody in my department I have a totally open door policy. And there's probably nothing you can say to me that I haven't heard about 10 times worse from a sailor. So trust me, I am completely open to any comments or criticisms. Mr. Chair. We're yes, uh, Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Matt, uh, the thing is, now you're here, you're going to get to take a dive in deep to find out what's going on here. 
Uh, how long before you could actually make a report to the board to say, okay, this is what you got going on. These are some of the things I see that you need to work on uh, short term, long term. Because uh, I know when you get in here, you're going to have to see what's all going on here first. Take a while. What do you think, 60, 90 days before you'd be able to come back and say, hey, this is what I see? Well, I was giving them two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you're a nice guy, too. I would say, sir, at a minimum, 60 days. And I only say that because the way I've observed the battle rhythm, there are a number of meetings that only happen monthly. Right. And I'd like to see at least two of those, if not three, before getting a good idea of how things are operating, just so I can get the full cycle, reinforce any perceptions, and I'd say potentially 90 for you know a third option, just to see how things are operating, see how things are running, see how things are going, and, and I could potentially get you something at that point. Yes, However, after the first month, I'd be more than open to discussing any particular concerns you might have or any issues that you might see that you might want to bring to my attention to pay attention to the next time around. But I'd say at a minimum, uh, 90 days. I'm a big believer in, in not walking into an organization and saying, okay, here's what we're going to change. I've seen that done in leadership too many times. And until you have an idea of the pulse of the organization and how it operates, it's very difficult to come in and make changes immediately. Almost every time I've seen that happen, it's gone south. It's so. gone really bad. Yes. So I, I, I am very hesitant to enact massive change without at least, I'd say, two months of watching how things are. So operate. 90 days is a fair time for you to come back and give us a quick update. What you see, uh, what's going on, things yes, sir. you think that we need to work on or look at. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I'm just very happy that you're here. It's been a while since we've had a, an IT director, and certainly Administrator Kelly's done a fine job, but it's been difficult being torn between the two the two positions so welcome aboard we're very Thank happy you, to have you well I believe you've garnered uh, good support uh, just with a little bit of interaction that you've had thus far so that's good there's a lot of uh, optimism within the department so I feel like uh, you should have good good support from the staff because uh, they have a lot of faith in in your uh, resume and what you what you think you can do for them so I think you're uh, off on the right foot so far thank you sir appreciate it I'm just glad you landed it at the right place at the right time in the right county. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> thank you for your service, too. And we're going to yes, go over and work over uh, <coughs> Greg Picard and the Veterans Service Office sometime. Mm -hmm. It's the Air Force guy. So. Yes, sir. We've, uh, we've already met. <laughs> Are we two Navy, two Air Force now? He, he said we needed both of them. That's what he was telling me. I said, that's fine. We'll use both of us then. <laughs> no Army, though, I hope. <laughs> Somewhere around Thank, the, the, the Thank you very much. Welcome. Thanks, sir. I'm sure in the sheriff's office there's plenty of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Any welcome, Matthew. We look forward to working with you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Auditor Treasurer, Mr. Bob Hevela. Hey, good morning. Coming good morning. up with us some tax forfeiture land resolution. Asset of land sale. Right before you is a resolution for the city of Buffalo to acquire uh, two little pieces of <laughs> tax forfeiture. Buying it for a dollar. I don't know if you can see it in the blue. It's probably only worth a penny. Yeah. But we're, we're squeezing them, so we want a whole dollar. The board before you is a resolution to allow the city of Buffalo to acquire these two pieces of property. Are this <laughs> so, I'll make is it like three feet by yeah. one foot? Or is it <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the resolution from the tax forfeit to the I'll second that. Buffalo. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Dahlide and second by uh, Commissioner Burrell for the acquire of this uh, parcel of land. I'm not going to read off the whole PID number. <clears throat> uh, with that, is there any further discussion? This is a resolution. Commissioner Dahlide? Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Commissioners, I did verify whether or not this was actual size. This, <coughs> this is an actual size. <laughs> this isn't. Good to clean it up. <laughs> it, the, the, the size of the screen might be the actual size, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for cleaning up another one. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> All right. Mr. Virgil Hawkins is here today. He doesn't have like 15 items like he did uh, last week. Right. So, good morning, Chairman Vetch and Board of Commissioners. Today there's two highway items for your consideration. 
Uh, the first of which is a procedural item uh, to approve a resolution to transfer the, the excess of the last two years sum of the state aid municipal distribution amount to our state aid regular construction account. We currently have a balance about 1.9 million in our state aid municipal construction account, which exceeds by 211,000 the maximum we're allowed to have in that account. So this is a, um, a resolution to transfer that amount to our regular construction account. I'll make a motion to <clears throat> transfer the um, excess of the last two years uh, from state aid into the state aid regular construction. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Dahlide and second by Commissioner Potter for the transfer of these funds from the uh, state aid uh, municipal account. Is there any further discussion? I think it is a resolution, too. It is a resolution, yeah. There's no others? All right. Commissioner Potter? Aye. 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 Resolution passes. Next, we have the approval of the Transportation Committee of the Whole Minutes from August 9th. At the meeting, uh, transportation meeting, August 9th, um, we met and talked about a variety of things. I'll, I'll go ahead and summarize the meeting here with the minutes that are in your packet. The first item was an uh, update on a the Highway 35 retaining wall project in the city of Buffalo. And Justin Canas, the city engineer, spoke at the meeting and kind of went through three different options uh, for consideration. The first one option was the plan design, which they have for bigger blocks and shifting it over, narrowing the road top four feet. But then along with that option, talked about narrowing the lanes to 11 feet and then providing an eight-foot shoulder instead of the... 10-foot shoulder that's there now um, and that would be the lowest cost option he went through a couple other options which were costlier uh, for both the county and the city and after some discussion there was a consensus to move forward and repair the wall in the most financially responsible manner and to update the current MOU for the city and as an update to this Justin met with the City Council last Monday, a week ago, yesterday, and they approved to go ahead with option one, which is what we kind of favored too because it was less costly. So they did award the project subject to the minutes being passed today in our, our approval. And then um, I would update the MOU with the city. We'd pay what we had budgeted this year, plus we'd pay the, the rest of our balance next year because they plan to start the work in September. That was that was the first item we talked about. The second item was an update on the County Road 106 Gowan Avenue 85th Street intersection, Maple Lake Township. We just gave an update to the board that we reached out to Corinna Township about their interest in realigning their 85th Street, and they were not interested in participating in the project. So we're going to proceed with option two and realign the intersection this fall with uh, County Highway Engineering doing the survey and design and highway maintenance staff. So this was just an informational update on that project. The third item we talked about was an update potential <coughs> truck station parcels in Annandale. Um, prior to the meeting on the 9th, we had reached out to the city for an update and they hadn't got back to us. So we didn't really have a lot to report at that time. Um, so this was just an informational item. Following this meeting though, um, Steve and I did meet with uh, Kelly Hinnenkamp, the city of Annandale, and they do have two things they're kind of working on as far as maybe a better spot for us. And she was, we're going to continue to meet with them to pursue some potential locations for us um, that may be better spots than what we looked at that they currently have for sale in their business park. The uh, fourth item was the CASA 36 right-of-way options. And this is on uh, Highway 36 east of 94. Um, our right-of-way agent, Jeremy Carlson, met with the owners and gave an update to the board at the meeting. And there are some different things that uh, need to be kind of further researched. So it was decided, to, the consensus was to continue and explore options for purchasing this parcel. A lot of it's dependent on uh, right-of-way or uh, wet wetland credits that could be developed in the future. And the next item we talked about was an update on the request for potential future Highway 25 access for State Highway 25 to our new uh, Justice Center and Government um, Center campus. 
and there was a lot of discussion about this. We had a proposed layout, and after looking at it um, at the meeting and discussing it with Alan was there, it was decided to proceed with uh, proposing closure of two of the accesses um, and request one new access, and we'd eliminate that frontage road we had drawn in to uh, the Historical Society at this time and try and keep that uh, current access. So we're gonna, we actually have a meeting scheduled with MnDOT a week from this Friday to talk about that further. And uh, so we're gonna pursue that with the state, see if we can get approval for that new access there. And we also talked about um, the walking path and how that might tie in. And the board consensus was the continue with new building construction with the grading of the walking path, but to hold off on paving it until the access request is finalized. The sixth item we talked about was um, our long range transportation plan. We distributed it at the meeting. Um, each board member got a copy and I, I sent one to you, Derek, later, because uh, you weren't able to attend the meeting. And uh, we talked about some different things that are in the plan and, and I'll bring that forward, um, the plan at an upcoming board meeting for final approval by the board. But some of the things that were talked about was um, there's a recommendation for a jurisdictional change of Braddock Avenue to become a county highway. <coughs> That's north of the LEC and that connects to County Road 113. And we talked about um, taking that over as a county highway and then possibly having an updated uh, lost local option sales tax list, maybe have another hearing next spring to potentially add that as a lost project. And that was the consensus of the, uh, the board for action. The final thing, the seventh item at the meeting was City of Monticello. Uh, Matt Leonard, the city engineer, was there to present a, um, the possibility of a route designation change for our Casa 39 through town and Chelsea Road. They're, they're going to do a study and report back to us on if that's feasible or makes any sense to do. But he just uh, came to the meeting and presented that they're looking at that. So that was more of an informational item that we'll hear back later from the city. So that's kind of a summary of of the, the meeting minutes, if there's any questions or changes or additions. Go ahead, did you add something, Chris? Commissioner Eusek? Well, actually, it's just a little typo with Delayden's name. It, yeah. A few places it um, appears O-N instead of E-N. Oh, okay. But otherwise. Sorry yeah. about that. No, that's all right. Yeah. I should have let you tell. <laughs> and then um, on page 205, Virgil, the first bullet, um, Brell asks why we need to read just the shoulder lines at all, and then stating narrowing anything is not a good idea. I may have said that, but I meant narrowing any road. Any road. So if we could change that to narrowing any road is not a good idea. Okay. But I probably said it wrong, so. Because I was so emotional at the time. <laughs> and and then as long as, we're, can we discuss the minutes there? With, yep. Because I, I, I'd rather, thing is, I, I could actually vote with the, with the the whole thing with the recommendation it's just I don't think option one is the most financially responsible manner <laughs> for the so, the retaining wall yeah yeah right so but I have a question to Virgil before we go uh, I've been thinking about I know you have to put these ties if you went with the small block you have to put these ties back but if we just cut down took the old wall out just cut straight down and put those big huge blocks they don't need to be tied back right Correct. They don't. So, and that's what their plan is. They, ex Except without removing the old blocks, they're just going to put the new ones but, in. Right. Yeah, I just, because uh, the new blocks are so big, they need six feet. They, there needs to be space to put those in. And they, they tear them up. They don't go straight up and down. They have to tear them back a little bit. Right. Not too much, though, yeah. Right. Anyway, so, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve just the minutes at this time. For the, because I, I say I, if... Like I said, the recommendation, it doesn't say option one in the recommendation. No, the, uh, the consensus was to move forward and repair the wall in the most financially responsible yeah. manner. And but I think that's, right. <laughs> I, because I'm looking down the road and I'm thinking 40, 50 years from now, somebody's going to say, you guys were idiots. What did they do that for? So I'm thinking that long term, it's not option one. So you think would have been cutting it way back? No, no, no. The the blocks, I mean, Virgil said they, they might need to go a little more, but they're going to have to haul some dirt out and cut it back a little bit because the, 
how wide are the new blocks? About three feet, the big ones? I think they're four feet long. Four feet long, but maybe about three yeah. feet wide? Yeah. Close to it. They're so. the same as the ones on Highway 12 on the yeah. other side of the lake. They're right. just like those. I like them, but anyway. Yeah, they are. Okay. I, I, if that's what being the fiscally responsible is that option, I don't want to vote for that, but I, I'll approve them, vote to approve the minutes, and then we'll, I can vote against the recommendation on that one. And maybe the wording is, there's semantics in the wording. I, I think the intent there was that the current cost for each of the options mm -hmm. the most, because right. the design, as designed, that's the lowest cost. The other cost to remove the other system and, and cut back six feet and take trees out and buy right away, that would add about $150,000 to the right. cost. See, and I think that's money well spent, but because we're talking 75000 for each one of us. So I don't know, board. It's just, I, I, I just think it's a mistake, and I don't want to vote for that. But Charlie? Yes. You know, you, you say in about 50 or 60 years, it might de decide to be a mistake. Yeah. Vehicles will be smaller, not larger. Really? You might be flying by then. <laughs> anyway, yeah. you, know, you know what, though? I'm just going to, I'll just, uh, I'm, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes and the recommendation. Um, but I just don't think it's optional. Second. <laughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Burrell, second by Commissioner Potter to approve the minutes and the recommendations from the uh, Transportation Committee the whole. Is there any other discussion? Um, just, just one, Mr. Yep. Chair. Yeah, I, I do believe that that's the most fiscally responsible, plus it seems like the best option, you know, with, from an engineering standpoint, when we were out at the, we went down to the wall and we took in the different options and um, it, to me, that makes the most sense. And I, we have engineers for a reason because they, they understand all this, all these options and so I, I, I feel comfortable with it and narrowing the road one foot for a well, short distance is not. It's more than one foot. From 12 well, you're, to 11. You're narrowing, you're narrowing the, the whole thing probably about it, four it, or five feet. The road top will be narrowed a total of four feet, yep. but it'll effectively feel like two feet because we're going to narrow the lanes from 12 to 11, so then the shoulder will still be eight And there'll feet. be no sidewalk. We'll go from 10 feet to eight feet. That'll right. be what... What and there's the no path. sidewalk then on the north side, right? That's the bike path side. So the bike path will be, that shoulder will be 10, it'll be 8 feet instead of 10 feet. So the sidewalk will be the same. Because right now there's sidewalk yeah. on both sides. No. There's oh. just sidewalk on one side and there's a 10-foot oh. shoulder on the other I thought side. It was on both. So the 10-foot shoulder will be 8-foot shoulder. So. Anyway. Well, all I can say is that I guess, you know, uh, I missed out on an exciting meeting. I mean, granted, good reason, you know, oh, you maybe being there. born that, that yeah. My, well, maybe I could get you to go along with my organization. <laughs> I know, you know, I, I mean, somebody made the right choice to skip in the I meeting and see my son being born, but it was interesting <laughs> discussion. The, the minutes don't reflect quite how the debate was. <laughs> tell, tell me if I'm wrong, though, but basically the, they, the, they would take down the existing wall, go back, whatever, <laughs> three feet, cut down and then put the bigger blocks up. That would be one option, but what they want to do instead is just take the big blocks and leave the ones that are there, stack them up, and then backfill with some dirt. And yeah, and then we're seems, losing... The it just seems rinky-dink to me. I don't know. I, I looked at it... I mean, I had the discussion. Lee gave me a good update on it after the meeting, and mm. I, I think it sounds quite costly and a lot with the acquisition of land and how much dirt we're going to have to move you to actually to do it. And I'd be afraid that, that it, we may underestimate the true cost of it. The thing is, it. it's not the end of the world. It could always do it, redo it later. Well, I think that if you're looking at, you know, acquiring property so you can put in the wall the way you're hoping to, you know, Commissioner Burrell, we don't know if those people want to take down those trees, and it, it just just makes the most sense to to keep it with the footprint that we've got and add it out. Anyway, all right. Well, we got a motion. We have a second. Anybody else want to comment for the record? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Thank Potter. you, Mr. Chair. Virgil, uh, with the in reference to the Braddock Avenue extension to go all that up, is this the time to do that swap with the township to get rid of 147? That's a good question, and that would be a logical thing. Because um, we approve the LRTP and, and want to approach um, Buffalo Township, that it, there is a sec segment of 147 that's in Buffalo Township that's that's shown in the plan 
to give to the township. So that would be a time to swap those, right? Yeah, and they're virtually the same distance. They're, they're, the, length, the length of those two are just about the same. They're just about the same, so it makes and, a lot of I sense. And I believe that, and I know Buffalo just passed their, re, re passed their orderly annexation agreement with Buffalo Township, and I think that area is in it. That's in, that's in the yeah, orderly annexation. So this annexation. would be a perfect time to do that all at once. Because that little pie piece that's sitting in Buffalo Township, completely separated from everything else, doesn't make a hill being sense for them to, to mess with it. Where's, one, where's 147 at? The one where we closed off to get some. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. closed off that's the. Right. Yeah. It's just a pie shaped yep. piece, and the only piece across. Road, the road to nowhere. Goes to nowhere. And, and for Buffalo Township, it's an orderly annexation area, so it's not like it's. Yeah, eventually no that, that'll be it. City Street in the future. Yeah, just get rid of it. City. Clean that makes that sense. Thing up. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Minutes from uh, August 9th are approved. Thank you. Mr. Sean Riley, he's coming back again. Let's see if we can keep him, bring him back another week. He's, uh, we like to make his agenda items come up back three, four times. Did you want some light? Oh, yeah. Oh, light. What? I like we like operating in the dark. <laughs> keep Mike awake. There, woke Brian up. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, County Board, we discussed this item last week. It got a little bit confusing at the end. I just want to clarify, this has nothing to do with a medical hardship provision. We have a standalone medical hardship ordinance at the County Board here. <coughs> this has to do with a mobile home or structure dealing with farm operations through a conditional use permit. At the end of the meeting, we rescinded a motion uh, for approval what was said at that motion, uh, Commissioner Dalleiden requested we bring it back in writing. We did that. So we have added or the farm operation in two spots after the primary farm residence or the farm operation and shall be within 750 feet of the primary farm residence or the farm operation. Uh, we did not include the word secondary. After giving us some thought and consulting with uh, legal input, it has no definition or relevance in this case, so it would just be a word that could lead to confusion. Okay. Well, Sean, I want to thank you for doing this because I think that it clarifies it and spells it out good yeah. now. Commissioner Delighton, you're okay with it? I believe it's better practice for us, too, to actually adopt them. If we make changes that are quite substantial to the ordinance itself that that we actually have it in writing so we know what we're actually uh, voting on and we did also add to um, where it's listed as a CUP under general agriculture as a temporary use and subject to annual local township review mm -hmm. it was felt that was a better place to put the requirement of the township review than in a definition. And I appreciate that, that that's in there because that was kind of some of the comments from some of the townships versus that wanting that annual review, mm -hmm. so. Um, Mr. Chair, with that, I'll move forth the change in the ordinance and the both both sections. Can I do that all in one motion, Sean? Uh, yes, I would refer to it as uh, ordinance amendment. Okay, and for the ordinance amendment. Four. Um, I'll move that forth as presented here by Mr. Riley. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Burrell. Oh, second. Second by Commissioner Dalleiden. Is there any other further discussion? Mr. Chair, I, Commissioner I, I still have a problem with this, <coughs> and I question even the mobile homes that are moved in for temporary use <coughs> or farm hands and that kind of thing. I, I'm very supportive of people's property rights and making things convenient for them, but our, our county is changing a bit, and it depends on, I mean, it's almost if you move a mobile home, you're indicating a bit of a hardship that someone doesn't have a place to live nearby or perhaps convenience, that kind of thing. But when you're putting a permanent structure inside, or a temporary structure, uh, apartment essentially, inside a permanent structure, to me, that just spells a little bit of, I, I just think it just is a bit of a slippery slope to me. And 
I mean, it's up to all of you if you're in favor of this. I mean, I know you've spelled this out. You've worked with it to get it within, you know, 750 feet. I'm a little bit concerned about how you're defining farm help, too. And if you're, okay, this is, we have one building entitlement for this property. To me, this is almost more of a an ordinance change as opposed to an amendment to an ordinance. And so you're getting essentially two residences on one property. And I, if we need 40 acres for building entitlement, I, I just, you know, and maybe I'm seeing this differently, yes, but sir. I'm just concerned that, okay, this is a great way I can put an apartment for my son who's helping on the farm and not in the house, but. but because I wanted to clarify, um, it's not a hardship for the person that's moving in and doing no, the help. No. It's the hardship is, let's say you're, you, you've, whatever, you have some illness, the farmer has some illness, and he needs help, and he needs that help to be on the farm site. So this is, we have it now. We, you can right. put a trailer house in. And this was my, I think it was actually in the minutes, the, in the median, and it's a good point, I think, because if I was a neighbor and I was concerned about the view that I don't own anyway, but I would I would say I would rather have them finish off a little apartment, a sleeping area and whatever living living area for, than to put it to bring in a mobile home, you know. Right. Because we already have that. That's already there. Exactly. You know, so and I but I think it it is good though because otherwise the person might have to go out of business, if because if he the help that he got let's say the person that he wants to help lived a longer distance away. Let's say they lived 30 miles away. Well, you can't have, you can't be calling up the help and say, hey, the, the, one of the cows is out. Well, the guy's an hour, half hour, hour away. So this puts him on the farm where he actually can do the help. So yeah. I, I, I think mean, it's, I think the other ordinance was good and I think this improves it. So. I mean, I, I definitely recognize that. I just, to me, it just gets into annual go and look and what are you going to do with this kitchen and all this you know this essentially a little apartment in this structure at the at the end of the day so it's uh, still going to be there I commissioners and I totally understand your your point of view on it the only reason that I we became okay with it is I felt like the amendment mm -hmm. that we're making to it is restrictive enough and there's there's not a whole lot of people that are looking to do this so I felt like this is a chance that we can kind of uh, make this change and for some of these people that are seeking this type of help, we can see how it plays out with the annual review and with it having to come with that conditional use permit, I feel like there's enough barriers in place that, that if we find out that it's, going to, it's being in, used for intentions that we did not want it to be used for, then we may have to look at changing it. But yeah. and, so. you know, and that's fine. I, when you, know, you look at the townships and the ones that reported back, they didn't all report back, but there were six were against, one had no comments, and four were in favor, and one was generally in favor. So I, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at. Sure. I think that they they have they have concerns. They're the ones that are out there in the townships, and they'll be needing to be doing these reviews. So, Mr. Just you you actually, uh, Commissioner Houston, I think um, our chair made a very good point, and I was going make it too is this isn't an automatic thing no there, there's nothing to say that even though the applicant that brought this forward for the change there's no saying that 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 he would get that it, when it because when it goes to the conditional use right. permit that goes to the planning board and it's going to be scrutinized at that point you know yeah. is this you know whatever so and I be a lot of questions I probably so. only I've probably only voted against the Planning Commission once or so in my oh, seven funny. years but anyway so that's that's my stand Okay. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Dodd, just one clarification. Does this state anything about um, existing buildings only, or are we going to allow them to build something to do this? Mr. Chair, Commissioner Dodd, and as we discussed last time, this ordinance does not spell that out, that it's either existing or can only has to be existing. Uh, the, again, somebody builds the building this year, and then applies for the CUP next year. It's existing. It's existing versus, it needs to meet the same codes, building codes, sewer codes, setbacks, limits that the Planning Commission may present. And there again, on ag land, 
if you have enough acres, you're pretty much unlimited what building you want to put up. You know, it's not like being in an R1 or a R2 area where you, you have these restrictions. So they could put up a building, I mean, what is it, a $10 fee or, I mean, I don't know, it's probably more now. Well, not you get it at the township, right? Well, for an agricultural building, right. it comes through the county, but this will this will have to be permitted as a personal shed. After this, modi so after the modification was done. But to <laughs> Commissioner Delighton's point, I, I understand, and I, and I actually was going along with it, but then I thought, well, it wouldn't make sense because if it's an existing building, like Sean just said, you'd build it now and then apply for the thing next year. It's an existing building, so um, I guess you couldn't put this in a building if it wasn't existing already. Well, so, so if somebody does a new building, I can envision if it's truly agriculture, some of the building will be for storage or agricultural use, and then there will be a portion of the building with these improvements that someday would have to be converted back for personal storage or use, not occupation. So I agree, Commissioner Hewson, that that might be a challenge, mm -hmm. but at no time, even if they're in violation, they're not doing the farm operation and they're still in there, it will not give them an entitlement. It will not give them a building right. site. I, I know the density appears as being, it's now two instead of one. It's just a... But it won't formally create an entitlement. It's I, the same I see it as a way to potentially homes. get around that that's my concern so. well the same concern exists with the mobile, mobile homes, homes yeah. yep and or, a get, or, a, or a guest house or right. a, a man cave and, and mr chair i'm um, sean so we've got a trailer a mobile home now that we're trying to get off a of property and so i i just see some of the some of the potential disputes going on between townships and re and residents, but that's well. The advantage of this, though, is that at least it fits in a pole shed. It's not noticeable like a trailer house is. You don't have as much plight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and usually we we win the day. I mean, we don't. Our office doesn't go away. So eventually, the estate sells. Right. Or there's a change in property use, and and the conversion takes place, or the mobile home is removed. But again, it doesn't doesn't create. You have a time. pretty good. You have a pretty good record, I think. Perfect. All right. So with that, we have a motion. We have a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Motion passes three two. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item is uh, schedule a committee of the whole on 9 11 19 at 2 o'clock to review position requests uh, yes mr. chair this came out of uh, discussions we had during the budget committee the whole uh, for some additional time to work through specifically the budget implications of the new position requests in the 2020 budget so um, proposing this date and time Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to schedule a budget committee of the whole meeting for September 11th at 2, 2 o'clock to review the position requests. I'll have, second that. I have a motion by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner Hewsom to schedule that committee of the whole on September 11th at 2 o'clock. Uh, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes are, minutes of the uh, committee of the whole is set for September 11th. All right, items for consideration. Uh, County Board Workshop. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you want to kind of walk us through the uh, workshop on August 13th? Uh, sure. We had a workshop August 13th. As you mentioned, uh, all commissioners were in attendance. In addition, there were representatives from the Auditor, Treasurer, Administration, um, Assessor, and Surveyor, and County Attorneys. Uh, we had several presenters. Uh, first off was Tom Supas from MCIT. Uh, came and provided our annual review of our coverages and our plan. Uh, talked a little bit about our dividend that we received in 2018 and the dividend that will be received in 2019, uh, which is slightly down than it was in 2018. Uh, talked a little bit about a few of the coverage enhancements that they're offering now uh, that were new for 2019 and an overview of some of the services available from MCIT, including the Employee Assistance Program. 
Uh, the second item discussed was Computer Assisted Mass Appraisal, or CAMA. Uh, this has been a long going project that the Assessor's Office has been working on. Uh, the vendor that uh, has been working on developing the software has changed um, companies and names over several years, in fact, seven years. And MCCC, the Minnesota County's Computer Cooperative, uh, has been kind of leading that uh, transition through it. Um, kind of the recommendation out of that section was that the uh, assessor and uh, Bob Hevel, the county audio treasurer, would have the authority to opt out of the software systems and pursue something different uh, for either the CAMA or the tax side of it. Um, so more information is going to be coming in October as there's going to be a demo done for the CAMA side. Uh, third item discussed was intergovernmental loans and talking about a revolving loan fund with the Economic Development Partnership. Uh, this spurred out of discussion that was initiated by the city of Otsego. Uh, Adam Flaherty, their city administrator, was on site to talk about a project that's going on at uh, Casa 39 and 42. There's a grocery store planned uh, development to be going in there. Uh, we had some input on what different counties have done and different types of projects in the region as far as uh, county or city contribution, <coughs> either tax abatement and tax abatement policies and revolving loan funds. So uh, the outcome of that discussion <coughs> was that we were going to be scheduling a committee of the whole, which has already been scheduled for the 9th of September, to discuss developing a um, uh, intergovernmental loan as well as some uh, discussion on tax abatement policy for the county. Uh, we had a suggestion that we look at a formula for funding the project that was brought forward from Montsego, 50% uh, of it being tax abatement and 50% of it being an intergovernmental loan. Um, another example was provided there. So as noted, uh, staff are pulling together some examples from other counties of, of their programs and we have scheduled the Committee of the Whole for September 9th to discuss this. Um, the last uh, item we talked about the Justice Center there was an earthworks change order as well as we reviewed the bids for the government center that had come in uh, Alan Wilsack the facility service director as long as well as representatives from Contegrity Group and BKV the architect uh, reviewed the bids that came in as well as some of the alternates uh, mm. the bids came in uh, about seven million under the estimate for construction and we looked at some of the different alternates um, revolving around the covered <coughs> parking area and making some adjustments to that uh, we also discussed the current third floor and the potential to look at shelling out some space uh, based on the favorable bids that came in so uh, we talked about the purchase requisition 62 and the earthwork of the Justice Center and what needed to be done in order to move forward, which includes some changes to also be made and how the lighting was configured in the area. So the recommendation was to award the contracts to the government center and approve PR 62 in the change orders at the board meeting that took place last week, August 20th. Uh, summary of the minutes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. With that, uh, look for an entertaining I'll, motion. I'll make that motion. Second, second by Commissioner Dollard and second by Commissioner Potter. Uh, for the approval of the minutes and recommendations from the, or there's no recommendations, but the workshop from uh, August 13th. Is there, yes? Sure, I just had a, a, two little typos <laughs> that I found on page one, the last paragraph. Um, if we stay with them, it should be the instead of those. The cost to the county. And then on page three, the, the paragraph under Justice Center Earthwork, where it starts discussed pursuing the alternate, the last sentence should be parking instead of pairing. A little typos. And I'm guessing you two are okay with those uh, spelling yeah, tweaks. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second in those modifications. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Workshop minutes are approved. Uh, the Justice Owner Committee on August 21st, uh, 2019, uh, 
Mr. Commissioner Burrell or Commissioner Dolly, do either of you would like to uh, walk us through the discussion of that afternoon? We could probably do it together. Um, one of the big things that we're watching is the um, contingency fee. It's currently a uh, around at $1.4 million, but we were cautioned that that is going to be used up with the uh, earthwork for the, with the parking lot in conjunction with the, <coughs> the new government center. So they, they didn't want to do the, gov the justice center now and then come back and redo everything. It would be a mismatch and stuff. So they're going to be using that. Not, mostly money is pretty much marked already. We went over um, some change orders. Um, everything looked real good and um, that's pretty much it. They're running. They're still running. Mark, do you remember? It's probably about a month or so behind. It was three weeks behind. Yeah, three about three weeks, weeks behind. They have made up some time. You know, it's just we got way far back in the spring with all the rain and everything, the bad weather. But um, they are they are catching up. They have everybody really. It's a definitely a busy place out there right now. So yeah, the, one of the biggest hold up the way it sounds is. Um, the solid surface swing wall cap <coughs> for the judges um, for the courtrooms. Um, there's a problem with um, the front cap of it because they're using um, granite, a stone of some sort. Yeah, oh. and they're having a problem making a curve with it. So it's a very hard material, and they're looking at it yeah. and. They did find one that would work, but the cost was a little overwhelming. So they decided to try and make it looking at another, all their other alternatives. And then also there on the outside trim, there's some material that, that is actually coming from Germany. Um, that's just where it comes from apparently, and they're running a little behind. So up on the I don't know if they'd call it a parafat or whatever, but it, yeah, it's some metal. But it's a, some some metal type thing up on the top. So yeah, it's American company. Yeah, product is made in Germany. In Germany, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, that um, and the American company has a plant in Germany, so this product is made in Germany. Um, did you have anything else, Mark? Or? <coughs> anyway, with that, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Um, as far as there was really no recommendation, it's just next meeting is uh, September 18th. And I was going to see if uh, Minister Kelly, if we could maybe oh, make was. the uh, September 18th oh, okay. maybe oh, a. You know what? I do have to back that up because there was a recommendation. Yes. And it's approving these two um, uh, requests um, PR 27R1 and PR 29R1. So I guess I would, I'm a, I'll make that in my motion, the motion be the minutes and those recommendations. And Mr. Kelly, I was going to see if we can maybe make the September 18th one maybe like a committee the whole into getting an update on the project as a whole and kind of maybe walking out as a group. We've never <coughs> done that yet in this entire project. That's and I true. think we're at about a 50% sure. point. That we're past 50%. 50%. We no, better be past 50%. Oh, we're past 50%, but we're, 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 yeah, <laughs> 60, yep. yeah. But it'd be... Sure, I'll look, uh, coordinate that with Alan. Uh, I know different groups have been up at different times and they've been very uh, accommodating to that as long as we know you're coming. So I'll work with Alan and get that arranged. Uh, Mark, are you okay with the, yes. including the recommendations? Yep, yep. 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 I'll right. second that. All right. Mark, Mark did. 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 Motion by Commissioner Burrell, second did. by Commissioner Dahlin, uh for the owners' right. committee, committee minutes fine. from August 21st. Is the there recommendation. any other in the recommendations? Is there any yeah. other discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for the public out there that doesn't understand what we just did here with some of the uh, changes, the uh, mm -hmm. especially with the dirt work when it comes to that, by doing it now, you're actually going to save money versus. <laughs> not doing it and then wait until the government center starts and then having a different contractor come in you're actually saving money and it's it's substantial amount you'd be saving doing it now versus waiting and have them move off site and somebody else come in and that's the reason for it. so for somebody that would say why are you doing that now it's it's going to be less expensive and and better for the project mine was that the piping right um the original piping was would have been too small to handle everything so it's uh, being set to be able to take care of the needs well into the future mm -hmm. makes the most sense is there any other discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign 
The Justice Committee owner or Justice Center Owners Committee minutes are approved. Uh, the next item is kind of uh, null and void as we already approved those minutes earlier in the meeting. So I am going to uh, forego that, barring any other opposition from fellow board members. Uh, next, we'll go to scheduling the uh, ceremony for the Government Center uh, for September 9th at 9.30 a.m. Um, and Mr. Chair, we'd also looked at, uh, knowing we have some other meetings that morning, looking at moving them to a location north of town so it would all be in the same area. Okay. okay. That would work. Uh, so with that, I'll make entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Potter. Second. Second by Commissioner Hewsom. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, that is scheduled. Uh, reschedule the quarterly leadership meeting. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you recall, at the last board meeting, we canceled the uh, second Tuesday in October, which is typically the uh, quarterly leadership meeting with both department heads and the board. Uh, so coming back with some alternate dates here. Um, I, I was thinking that that same week might work well as it is committee week. Um, we do have committees the morning of the night, so one opportunity would be to meet uh, maybe at 1 o'clock on the afternoon of the 9th, if that would work. <coughs> Otherwise, I have a few other You want to make it on the, on the 9th you at what time? Uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, on the 9th, we have um, H HHS, HHS at 1.30. Okay. October 9th or September 9th? Oh, I'm sorry. Just to clarify. Oh, we get October 9th? We're looking at October. The quarterly would be in October. October 9th. At what time, Lee? Uh, 1 p.m. You guys can go ahead and meet. I won't make that one, but if you guys want to go to October 9th, that's fine. Okay. Is is there a better day, Mr. Chair? I'm fine either way. I, if I Charlie, miss are you going to be gone that time? No, I'll be. I'll be back. That's October. Yeah, I thought you were going to go with this. I thought you were going to because we canceled another, that correct? board meeting on that Tuesday. I don't know if you. I, we we canceled that October eighth board meeting. So we we are going to meet on the eighth then. No, there's no board meeting. There's no board meeting. No board meeting. I don't know if you were. Yeah. I'm I'm gone because of that, but that's fine. If you guys want to meet on the. Uh, on the night, that's fine. I, it's just leadership. It's not I'll be, the. I'll be back. So, that's fine. I'm fine. Yep. We'll be having committee meetings that day too. Then. Correct. Yeah, that's committee meeting starts earlier. Yep. It's the way the month falls. That's already the uh, the second Wednesday of the month. Yeah. So, what time were you talk, thinking about doing it? Uh, thinking of doing a one p.m. The chair will make a motion to set the quarterly leadership meeting for October 9th at 1 p.m. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Hewson, uh, second by Commissioner Burrell. Is there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Leadership meeting is approved. That concludes the agenda outside of uh, advisory updates. Uh, we do have our ditch committee of the whole today at one o'clock, or sorry, two o'clock regarding ditch 33. But um, I guess anybody, Commissioner Husum? Oh yes, I. Sorry, well, I will not be able to make that. I have crime lab. Sure. At two o'clock. Can't make it all. We get pulled make, many directions at the all. same time. I was hoping to be able to not make it too though. Oh. That brings us down to three, and I know there's a lot of people coming to attend today, so uh, please, at least two other commissioners, try to attend this today. Uh, Charlie, you're not going to be here? I, I, would, I have a lot of stuff to do, and I'm leaving tomorrow real early in the morning. I can't believe that you don't want to be involved in a ditch meeting. I, I do. I would like, love to do it. And if, if need be, I will make it too, but... I haven't talked to you yet about it, Terry, but I was going to. <laughs> I'm guessing you two will be here at 2 o'clock today? I will be here, for sure. All right. Because you need three. So I do need three. Of, maybe. Does it work? <laughs> if not, are we, are we just going to... I don't we, know how that plays out. Uh, what, um... 
<laughs> what, what are we discussing this afternoon? Uh, Ditch 33, we're, we were going to uh, close the public hearing on the redetermination of benefits, and we are also, Houston Engineering's coming out to propose repair options for Ditch 33. So. Yeah, and Mr. Chair, members of the board, this is actually the first presentation we'll have with uh, H2 overviewers. Okay. The first uh, ditch system that they've uh, completed since we switched over to using them. So looking forward to their presentation. Should be a lot more uh, technologically advanced using GIS layering and, and drone work. So should be a good presentation, I think. Okay. Sounds like fun to me. <clears throat> All right. So with that, uh, advisory updates. Uh, Mr. Brell, you have anything? I am going to pass. Um, well, I was at the annual meeting for Lake Pulaski and a lot of good discussions about efforts that they're, they have going on with their Lake Improvement District. And they had a, a challenging year because with the, all the water that we got this, this spring, the rain and the snow melt, they were actually, their lake levels got you know too high but they weren't able to pump into Buffalo Lake because the we're Buffalo <laughs> Lake levels were too high. So they had, I think they, it was, wasn't until July that they were able to, to uh, pump some water. Um, they, yeah, they have a lot of effort going on with, with their AIS, attacking AIS, and they still by July had about 400 boats when someone was at the, at the public access that tried to get on the lake with weeds on their boats, and so that continues to be a problem. I was at the EMS meeting, our local EMS meeting on Wednesday, last Wednesday, and they're looking at getting a team together when they have critical incidents that they can basically do a debriefing and support for the team, you know, that, that has gone through this critical incident. And also, Marion Marian, uh, Larson was there from Central Minnesota EMS and reported that we're out of Narcan and hopefully can get some by November. And so all the, the fire departments and the EMS people were happy to hear that because they, they do use the product on a regular basis to help bring people back. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass today. Commissioner Nolan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, last week uh, in the afternoon, I was down at the, uh, that's why thank you, Commissioner Delight, for sitting in on me at the Owners Committee meeting last week. It's on the Transportation Alliance, the Legislative Outlook <coughs> meeting. We were blessed with having uh, Commissioner Margaret Anderson Kelleher there. Um, and this is kind of a strategy going into what we're looking at for the legislation next year, uh, being a bonding year trying to get the <clears throat> make some headway down there which is what kind of tough last year with the the new governor knew everything going on it was um, a little bit chaotic uh, the they know I'm going to be the president of the transportation alliance next year so they're kind of starting to get on board with more of my thought instead of making a 20 cent a gallon gas tax increase which is not going to happen why don't you just make us the national average, which is six cents of that. Five cents are going to the roads, and one cent will go into uh, debt service, which is kind of required by is statute. Is that catch and hold at all? What? Oh, it's catch and hold. There, I even got Margaret to talk about it. That was just make idea. us the national average, and that's that's fine. I mean, it, it's tell them tell them that was my idea. Well, I told him a libertarian <laughs> that I know. Of. <laughs> <laughs> No, and the whole thing boils down to is, is it, you know, don't reach for what you can't then, get. But then you don't, then it, it then it's done. It, you have, whether they reset it every year or every two years, well, My done. thought going forward was that every two years, talk about it, because every year is probably going to be tough. For the because business. Be busy, but every two years you agree to, to find out where it's at. And, and, of course, you know that if it has any indexing or that, it's not going to, it's not going to pass the Senate down there for sure. So why even why even put it in? Why beat your head against the wall on that one? Yep. Uh, very productive meeting went quite long. It was like about two, a little over two hour meeting, which is is long for those ones. Um, and most of them were metro centric people. Uh, uh, Jody Teich uh, from Stearns County, and myself, were the only two from really out of the metro that were there, uh, contributing to that meeting. But 
I still need the Metro to get on board with what's going on here for Outstate to get uh, their share. They they seem to understand that the dynamics between the two, they got to make sure that works for all parties. They're talking, they're singing that song now. Hopefully it stays that way. But the, that's all I got. Thank you, sure. Commissioner Potter. Administrator Kelly. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, following one of our budget sessions, I was able to catch the last part of the Wright County City Administrators meeting. They have one uh, monthly towards the end of the month and was able to catch the latter part of that. It was nice to touch base with them. Uh, a lot of questions and positive comments around economic development, building. Um, There's a lot of interest about if we were going to look at the local option sales tax and have another hearing. So a lot of opportunity to have a discussion on what's going on at the county and the, their feedback. So well, that's going to be a well-attended meeting for yeah. the municipalities. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that the people that were against the local option sales tax are now, hey, I got a project I want to add to this list. <laughs> you probably have the same frustration with the legislature that I have had. And that, is there any other business that we want to uh, entertain yet today? Barring that, it is 10.01. We will uh, adjourn today's meeting. <laughs>